let's face it. We've all fantasized of being inside a Gundam, an Armored Core, Yorichi, or an Eva unit. Maybe not the last one. And while video games and anime let us vicariously experience such fantasies, nothing beats actually living it in a TTRPG session. Today, I present to you the Gitter System. Gitter stands for Getting the Robot. And this system gives your 5th edition table all the tools you need to create a high-tech mecha-themed campaign from terminology conversions like creature types to mecha types to new mechanics like expanded weapon properties and mecha customization. Hello and thank you for being here, and welcome to My Wife Is VMC. I'm DMV and you're watching Husbando Homebrew, a show where we take pop culture to pen and paper. So, is everybody comfy at the table? Start up your mecha by clicking on that like button and get in the robot. Part 1. Elevator to Engineering The Gitter system started out in ye olden days of 2018 as the elevator pitch to MC about a single-player 5th edition campaign based on Gundam. Back in those days, her only experience with Gundam was Mobile Fighter G Gundam. She was mostly game for it, but there was one challenge. D&D 5e was made for medieval fantasy settings. Now, there are some great non-D&D mecha systems out there like Mechton or Lancer. The later versions of Mechton in particular have a very in-depth mecha creation system, while Lancer provides a full top-to-bottom system with a very compelling setting that resembles a mix of Mech Warrior, Dune, and Armored Core. The problem was that MC and I were already heavily invested in 5 I've honed my skills on that system like crazy, so I wanted to leverage on said skills while MC was always more of a role player than a number creature. So learning a new set of complex rules weren't her forte. So I quickly drafted a bunch of rules, some of which came from an old Power Rangers one-shot, to try and flesh out the mechanics surrounding pilots in Mecha. And man, those rules were… a mess. They were a mess. Constant revisions, a lot of on-the-fly adjudication, and a lot of confusion. And yet we continued to refine the rules together and managed to play over 80 sessions and counting. In fact, it's one of my most successful campaigns in my 7 years of DMing. All those refinements would eventually become the Gitter system. It's our baby. It's the culmination of over 350 hours of playtesting and refining a bunch of rules to really fit the circle peg that is the mecha genre into the square hole that is 5e's rules. So if you've always fantasized of playing in a mecha themed campaign like I did back in 2018, then there's a good chance the Gitter system is right for you. If you still need convincing, here's the gist of Gitter. It's a setting agnostic supplement to D&D 5th edition that gives the DM a bunch of tools and guides to prepare and run a mecha themed campaign setting or adapt an existing mecha setting. As a player, the Gitter system lets you have your own mecha to pilot, customize, and even lets you pick and upgrade individual parts. There's also a wealth of expanded weapon rules to give more variety to combat. Part 2. A World of Mecha Gitter's opening chapters focus on enabling the DM to build their own mecha theme campaign or adapt an existing one by providing rules and guidelines that serve as narrative anchors. The first chapter focuses on terminology and some simple world building tools. These come in the form of creature types converted into mecha theme types to aid in stat block conversion. This chapter also has an entire glossary of words that translate 5e's magic theme syntax into technologically appropriate terminology. The second chapter delves into some mechanics such as new skills, tools, and more importantly, narratively and mechanically recontextualizing magic into technology. The second chapter closes with 5e's classes being contextualized in a mecha-themed setting like warlocks secretly working for a sentient AI or sorcerers being bathed in a strange energy. This section even includes druids which has a very hefty author's note attached to it because mm, wild shape is some wild shit. Part 3 pen and paper war machine. To showcase some of the player side mechanics, I'll lend you my personal mech, the Versus, which runs on the Gitter operating system. Go ahead and board and start up the machine. Oh, and don't forget to close the cockpit. Don't worry, you should still be able to use your features and abilities like usual. So this is the hangar, where you can service your mecha and do your customization. This is also where you find the mechanics hangar, which is a tool proficiency and one of Gitter's optional rules. By the way, don't scratch the blue paint job, alright? Ha ha, very funny. Did MC put you up to this? Anyway, the Gitter system has a bunch of new stuff regarding weapons. It imports most of 5e's PHB weapons and adds several more that's appropriate to your mecha setting from handguns to gatling guns. Here's an interesting one. It's a cannon but technically deals lightning damage. We'll get to that later. 
Looks like you've got your kit. Go ahead and take the Versus out for a spin. So, first thing you'll notice is that everything is pretty far apart. No amount of 30 foot speeds can cover those distances in time. Open up the gitter system and look at the tenfold rule. This rule scales up pretty much everything by a factor of 10, which means the usual 5 foot space on the grid becomes a 50 foot space while you're piloting a mecha. This rule also scales up damage, effects, range, and targeting. Looks like you're already using the pistol. Feels good, huh? The pistol is just one of the many new weapons added by the Gitter system. It has most of the weapon properties you're familiar with, but with a bunch of new twists. Cartridge is just a fancy high-tech version of ammunition, which needs reloading after you make a set number of attacks. Hip lets you fire at melee range without disadvantage. Other range weapons like the rifle even has a kinetic property, which is one of the many optional rules offered by Gitter that lets you hit more than one target. That missile launcher is another Gitter weapon having the shoulder property that lets you use it without a free hand, and the homing property. Homing is another optional rule that deals small but guaranteed damage similar to Magic Missile. Of course, that doesn't mean missile spam is Gitter's meta, but the intention behind it is to pressure targets into moving and repositioning. Okay, you did a pretty cool thing there. You dashed and further engaged your boosters to cover a greater distance. The Gitter system offers several new actions called EP actions that give you more mobility and defense options, but at the cost of a new energy called energy points. EP is another optional rule that adds a new resource that replenishes at every turn. Uh, by the way, you be careful around here. There's a crazy person with a chainsaw-wielding mecha that tends to attack other pilots. Yup, there it is. There goes a blue paint job. So that pile bunker move you did right there, it uses Gitter's new pile bunker weapon. Notice that it has the breach property, followed by a damage number. This is Gitter's optional breach property, where you can cause the breach condition if you roll high enough on the piercing damage from the weapon's damage dice. In this case, the breach condition reduces the target speed by 100 feet. All of the melee weapons have been given this treatment, and the conditions themselves aren't too nasty to make marshals overpowered. Great move with the railgun! See how it dealt lightning damage? That's one of the new disruptor weapons that further expands Gitter's suite of weapons with several new variants. Disruptor weapons deal lightning damage and has the disrupt property, which can cause a disrupted condition if you manage to roll high enough on the damage die. There are a few other weapon variants like this, such as acid, heat weapons, or sonic weapons, and they all function in a similar manner. And no, I didn't ignore the program executors slash spellcasters out there, as chapter 2 indicates how you can force some of these new conditions using spells. You dodge pretty well there, but unfortunately the versus is still looking pretty scuffed up. Go ahead and use the nano repair I loaded on there. In case you find yourself in need of getting other items, the Gitter system has a full list of mecha-specific equipment. Hmm, looks like the damage is still mounting. Time to do field repairs then. This shouldn't take long. Alright, time to get back to the hangar. You just get through that door and yikes, that's a massive one. Definitely an amalgam type mecha given all the mishmash of parts. Maybe eject out and let me handle this one. Time to show you my incredible piloting skill. Okay, that could have gone better. But hey, you somehow pulled through. I obviously wanted you to take the credit for that one. Uh, don't tell my wife about the repair costs. Anyway, you probably want to see how to customize your own mecha. The Gitter system has a massive chapter that shows the different parts you can equip from arms, legs, head, and even cockpit and generator. This system is entirely optional, and it lets you create a separate character sheet for your machine. Notice how certain parts determine your mecha's ability scores based on your pilot scores. This means that you need to meet the part's minimum ability score to use it properly, and the part has a maximum limit as to how much it can be pushed. This emphasizes how a mecha's parts require a certain level of skill. Victory is never determined by mobile suit performance alone. Nor is it decided by the skill of the pilot alone. The result itself is the only true. But a pilot's skill can also eventually outpace that particular part. This exact thing happened to Amaro Ray, after all. Other parts determine your mecha's movement speed, while other parts determine your mecha's senses. Special mention goes to the cockpit part, since that one lets you change up how you operate your mecha. The mobile tray system, for example, adds a bonus to your martial arts. The pipe organ, on the other hand, 
lets you control the mecha like Lelouch and use your intelligence for your attack and damage rolls. Part 4. Kitchen Sink Mech the Gitter system covers a lot of stuff to run a mecha-themed D&D campaign, and I only alluded to some of the major highlights. There's even a section in Appendix B that gives you examples on how to flavor magical features into technological ones. Now, I know there's been a big gap in releases, but that's really because I spent a lot of time refining and working on this document. It's probably my biggest homebrew yet, and I'm really proud of this. And I hope this system helps you and your table live out your mecha fantasies. At the very least, I hope I earned your like. In any case, there's still a lot of space where the system can expand. I have a bunch of warship rules that I left out for a future expansion, and I haven't even touched on creating bespoke stat blocks for DMs, so let me know in the comments whether you want to see more of the Gitter system. Side note, I'm aware of the 5e Gundam conversion that's already out there. While I personally don't agree with Midnight Hatter's approach, it's definitely a much more comprehensive system conversion. Go and check it out and let me know how Gitter stacks up. Remember to get your free copy of the Gitter system in the Ko-Fi link down below. The donations part there is totally optional and we highly appreciate your support. Oh, and don't forget to share this with your captain. This has been My Wife is the MC. I'm DMV and my wife and I hope you have a great day ahead.